really miserable story to start us off with. The man who's dead now, thankfully, but who did the chemical attack on, I think, his ex-partner and a child, and, you know, she's still very, very ill. He, he lied like crazy to win asylum. And part of the reason he won asylum is he, he said he was a Christian convert, although he failed a number of questions about Christianity. And he had a previous conviction as well, James. I think this is an, an extraordinary system of, or systematic failure of so many different areas of our society. And you know that when the Daily Mail uses the F-bomb, the fiasco word, that uh, we should perhaps be focused on this. And whether it's process that has failed, or rules which aren't being applied properly, or actually application of different entities. But I'm also very concerned that religious organisations are either using or being used for this kind of covert cover. On that note, let's just have a look, James, while you speak. This is the picture of him being baptised in Jarrow. So, so the point about him being that he can say it's now unsafe for me to go back to wherever, Afghanistan, wherever, because I'm a Christian and that will put me in danger. Exactly. And, and that's where I think uh, religious organisations and institutions need to take an element of responsibility here for, of course, their job is to convert people. And why shouldn't people be able to choose whichever religion they wish to have? Um, I know that some take the view that, you know, you're born into it and that's it. And there are others who, who are very keen to convert and to bring you along to their flock. But I think that there is a, a, a deep side of concern here that we are seeing that religious organisations are being used as a front to allow people to obfuscate and avoid the rules which are being applied on asylum particularly. Well, did, Gem, what do you think? Because the judge basically had this all in front of him. The judge is called William O'Hanlon. He allowed the appeal, so he allowed him to stay on the country, in the country. He knew about the previous conviction. He knew that the the conversion was sketchy. Yeah. I don't um, know. It's the sex offender bit that really bothers me, that previous conviction, more than... I mean, although it's not great, somebody pretending to be a Christian so they get to stay here and have refuge. Like it, so that's an abuse of so the system. So it was a flashing offence, was it? Or was a, it a, an assault as a, the, well? The, well, the, the male are very strong on it and I, I, don't, I don't know. But it says they knew he was a sex offender. Yeah. And, and also when he was asked about his Christian conversion, he was asked a very simple question. Does Jesus appear in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Mm. And he said the Old Testament. And that's kind of a basic error. Yeah, it is. So it's, it's a failure. This man shouldn't have been allowed to no. stay. He's turned out to be a violent person and, and that's a terrible mistake. Yeah. Terrible, there are terrible, so terrible. many failures which have allowed him to and I think yeah. we've got to tighten up these systems. Well, the church is going to have to stop these baptisms, isn't it? Well, yes. It's going to have to. I know, but I know the church is in the church's, you know, mindset to, to welcome people from wherever they're from. And that's great. So it's very hard to tell them, watch out for, for con artists, because they're not set up to do that. Very different. But a lot of churches see a huge influx of parents when their child is about three or four and needs <laughs> yeah. to go to, to uh, nursery school, <laughs> well, exactly. primary school. That is very different because they are citizens of this country. But you're right. Of course. OK, there's a speech yesterday.